Okay, so trauma. Just came across a, an amazing book that I highly recommend for anyone interested in more on trauma. Read this book. I mean, just amazing. Um, I actually heard about it on another channel and somebody somebody mentioned it and I thought, I've never heard of that book. I should check it out. And then, lo and behold, it's probably one of the best books I've read on trauma. Um, it's amazing. By Judith Herman. Trauma and Recovery, name of the book. I'm not even all the way through it, and here I am already talking about it on this channel. It's amazing. Um, what I like about it is the fact that she gives an amazing overview of a, a global picture of what's happening with trauma. She says, this is the quote, the conflict between the will to deny horrible events and the will to proclaim them aloud is the central dialectic of psychological trauma. That resonates with me. Um, and, and in the book, she fleshes this out more in terms of how that, that's both an internal conflict for people with themselves, uh, with their dog named Lucy, who wants to bark at something outside the door. Um, with the internal, the internal conflict of sort of being at war with yourself to talk about it, to wanting to deny it and wanting to talk about it. That's in, interior, an, a conflict between in self, but also between the individual and culture, society, friends, family, people. There's that same conflict where, by and large, um, <clears throat> the tendency is for <clears throat> culture, family, friends, people <clears throat> to, to take the stance of, um, denial of the horrible events, right? We don't, we flinch. We don't want to know that things like the Holocaust happen, happened. We don't want to know that women are raped. We don't want to know, like, these are, these are horrific things that we, we run from. I mean, I see that in myself. I, I'm in a, I work in a field, I work with a lot of trauma, because I'm in mental health, I'm in holistic medicine, basically. And there's, it's trauma. And there can be you know, the psychological world refers to it as secondary trauma, to be the person who listens to trauma. Um, and that, the temptation again is to, to run. I mean, you can have a visceral reaction to, to trauma, even just hearing about it. I mean, there have been times in my office where um, it's, it's, it's difficult, you know, and we all have our own trauma and that's another layer to that where your own stuff, um, part of that is your own stuff getting triggered. And another aspect would be just the more horrific the trauma, the harder it is to listen to it. Um, but how important it is for there to be a listener. That's, that's part of the healing. Uh, so she talks about this in the book, um, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about, so this, this imbalance that occurs that kind of sums up a lot of, a lot that happens in drama. The imbalance really in the person would be between exteroception and interoception allow me to explain. So exteroception, the term is used to, to refer to the information that's coming in to the nervous system, to the CNS, via the, the parts of us that intersect with the world. So the five senses, your, your sight, smell, taste, hearing, 
touch all all those all the information that comes through that realm is generally referred to as exteroception, the ex exteroception side. The interoception side would be the information that comes from your internal organs, your emotions, your thoughts, the stuff that's more private. And the term is not, I mean, there's some overlap. And in the nervous system, there's there's overlap. So hold it loosely. But what ends up happening in trauma is this: the balance gets skewed from the trauma. Take for example the child of the alcoholic parent. They end up disproportionately in the exteroceptive on the exteroceptive side of things. So. Timmy is watching when dad comes home and he's hyper vigilant to is this going to be a, a scenario where dad beats us with the belt or do we is it going to be less traumatic today do I is he going to throw the bottle at my head do I um, so Timmy starts being highly, highly in tune to the smell of his breath, the, um, the noises that dad makes as he's getting out of the car, walking into the house. Um, even the noises in the house, he's lying in his bed at night, let's say late, and he's listening to the screaming between mom and dad. Is it escalating? It's keeping him from sleep but he is hypervigilant. He's looking at facial expressions. He's reading the facial expression to see, is it, is this an, what's going to happen now? He's trying to cope with this, the adverse events of his childhood that are happening, the trauma of dad being an alcoholic and beating mom and the kids. And in so doing, he, he ends up spending more time in that exteroceptive side of things and, and starts to neglect and ignore the interoceptive side of things. So he's not thinking about the the information from the interior. Do I need to poop? Do I need to uh, eat something? Right? He's he's ignoring that. He's not he's not on that realm. He's he's in the exteroceptive side of things and. What happens is he hangs out there so much that an imbalance begins and grows, right? It, it ends up um, worsening in time. And so now um, what, what the healing force starts to try to do is restore the balance. And so now, um, down the road, let's say we fast forward 20 years, okay? Now, now Timmy is 30, and he happens to end up in his own um, abusive relationship with this narcissistic woman, and he's re-traumatized, and now he develops... Um, fibromyalgia or anxiety well maybe and anxiety <laughs> you know all sorts of physical things start to happen now from if we're not looking at this through a, a lens a holistic lens that's broad sweeping you know the the thought is well eradicate the fibromyalgia get rid of that instantly suppress it take a drug figure out how to make that go away. A better way to, to come at this is to first ask the question, okay, what's going on here? Why is this here? Oh, this is here because there's this imbalance between the exteroceptive side of things where I'm hanging out all the time and I'm not listening to 
my own body. And as I've mentioned before, the body whispers before it screams. And so it starts to give us little, like, raising the hand, may I, may I speak? From the back of the classroom, the shy girl in the back, right? She's maybe going to raise her hand and then she gets ignored. So then she's standing on the desk, throwing pencil. No, not the shy girl. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, basically, the, the, the body amps up the message if we ignore it. And so it's, it's not uncommon um, when I sit with people and they have serious amounts of trauma in the past. I mean, we all have trauma, but some of us more than others. Um, the symptoms that are described to me are things like, I mean, if it's if it's bad enough trauma, um, I've had patients tell me I I feel like I'm on fire. I physically feel like I'm on fire walking around. That is the body screaming, screaming at the patient that the the balance is skewed right? The hypervigilance, the anxiety. And there can be this, um, this, this awkward, clumsy, um, ping-ponging back and forth between intero and exteroception. So it's like, the body's like, whoa, come on back here. And the patient's like, no, 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 that's painful. I'm not going there. I'm running from that. And so they become, you know, hang out more hypervigilantly in the exteroreceptive side of things. And then, and there's this, just like in the Judith Herman book, there's a war, there's a conflict because the body needs, needs attention in a very basic way. Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to heal. We're trying, we're trying to heal. And, and so, I, I don't think it's odd, but I'll say oddly enough. <laughs> oddly enough, the way to go about healing this scenario is to get back into your body. Now, that is absolutely frightening for someone who's been traumatized because trauma happens in the body. And so we have to kind of sideways come at this. And there are, you know, one of the reasons I am such a huge fan of trauma sensitive yoga um, is because it, it does this, it, this sideways come at the body and you help someone carefully and gently get back into their body and to start to begin the conversation again with, with what's happening in the deep, what's happening physically. You know, it's the same thing on, on the emotional level. You know, we, we run from the emotions. We neglect the, what we're feeling, suppress it, push it down, push the squelch it back down because we're out in the exteroceptive side of things. We're hanging out there. And, and then the emotions start getting louder and louder and screaming, right? Then you have a volcanic eruption on your hands. And you're like, what? What is this? What? Right? Maybe you just acknowledge it. You're not angry. You're not an angry person. Or and the and the emotions can mutate and you you think, you know, you think you're feeling this and it's all part of that is um trying to get you to to return to look at them. Like, what are the emotions here? What are you feeling? <laughs> what are you thinking? Right? All of, the, all of that information from the interior we neglect. Um, sometimes the, the skew, the ba imbalance can go the other direction. I would say I don't see that as commonly with, um, with trauma, with PTSD. I would say it tends to go in the, the way I described where the exteroception side of things takes over um but you do have it going the other way where someone is shutting out the ex-tero side of things the world I, I think this happens uh more often when you have something like schizophrenia 
right? When you have serious mental illness, that again, the balance is skewed, right? The person kind of shuts out the external world um, and hangs out in the interior. And now, you know, now my internal dialogue with myself, with things that are happening around me, um, things that I perceive that maybe other people can't perceive, which, you know, may or may not be there, right? <laughs> Sometimes they really are there, <laughs> but it might not be there. It might just be your experience, your, your hyperacuity to the internal. And thus, I think that's how broadly sweeping how some some serious mental illness happens that's that's what's happening is that the balance going the other way um so entero versus exterior reception um finding the balance for most of us in the ptsd camp complex ptsd camp the the imbalance goes in the direction of spending too much time and attention in the extero on the extero side of things and ignoring the interior right i mean i think this is what happens in um abusive relationships for sure right the the narcissist um the the victim i hate the word victim but the 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 codependent, we'll say, in the relationship with the narcissist ends up um, abandoning uh, themselves, abandoning their intuition, abandoning their their own body um, in order to be, you know, sucked up into the mothership of the, the narcissist. That's extero reception that the, you know, outside themselves they've they've left themselves and so again in that kind of scenario returning to to you to your body um to your physical body to your emotions to right because i mean the the narcissist will tell you what what you're feeling <laughs> they've got it down <laughs> Oh, you're not feeling that. You're actually wanting to go get me a coffee right now. Oh, oh, I am. <laughs> so, um, that exteroception side, you know, returning to the interoception side, listening to your to your body again, um, all those symptoms, that anxiety, uh, the the depression, the the mood stuff, that's that's calling you back to yourself. You don't realize you have to, you need to be called back to yourself because you, you hooked up with this narcissist. So it's like, um, yeah, get back to yourself. Uh, that's, you're an important, that interoceptive side of you, that's important. So anyways, I, I check out the book. This is a long trauma and recovery. Amazing. I agree with the, the person that I heard about this from said one of the best books on trauma and I'm only I'm not all the way I'm halfway through and I I agree awesome amazing book check it out thanks for tuning in adio